uh, in Castle Main, or Castle Main as I always say. And there's a beehive in this tree. There's also a beehive in a willow a little bit further down. We're doing both today. Uh, it's right near a playground. The tree's got a massive crack in it that's developed over the last couple of months. There's a termites. And it was near falling, so it had to come down. And now we have the arborists doing what arborists do uh, in safely felling the tree. The hive is right up near the top of what's left and the safest way to get it out is to take the tree down in this instance. She goes. Okie doggies. So the tree's down. Uh, we obviously, because it's in council owned land, we at the botanical gardens here in Castle Lane. We are doing this for the Mount Alexander Council. The hive is seems to have taken it well other than the initial when it fell they were really annoyed but now they seem to be all much more settled some bees are leaving and reorientating uh, there are some bees flying up high trying to work out where the hive's gone but and then you've got bees fanning at the entrance saying hey come here this is where we are now uh, and they'll be refanning once I expose the hive and um, get it into a box Anyway, let's get cracking on this. Okay, I've done a little bit of work just um, checking the hive wasn't higher up and then trimming it back until we get to here. Um, don't know how easy it is to see in there. It's a sloppy mess. Uh, that's not honey, that's uh, moisture and um, gunk from the tree. Uh, this tree's um, been nicely eaten out by termites and left a nice gunky residue but you can see the start of the beehive here so this will be the top of the hive um, indicator of what that gunk is if we come down to the base of the tree there's this it's all icky and sloppy um, uh, termite wet yucky anyway um, and this this is the split that was formed over the last a month or so and has run all the way up the tree uh, which is what gave them concern that it was going to fall so hence where we're at now to pulling the beehive out of it and then once we finish this one we'll pull the hive out of the other one okay I've split the log or split the trunk uh, the hive goes down lower but I'm just getting an idea now See, it's been here a long time. Yeah, that's better. It's been here a very long time. The time's black. There it goes. All the way down. And just keeps going. So, yeah, um, we'll split further before I fully pull this trunk piece off so that I've got the whole hive exposed before I um, sort of separate the trunk. And now I've cut a section below the hive so I could work my way back up and you'll see things crossed, yeah there we go, and there's the bottom of the hive, uh, it's all newer whiter comb and the bees are 
from basically running from about there all the way to the top so about two and a half meters the the full length of the hive decent hive Yes, so the bottom half of the hive has been abandoned to the point that wax moth has started chewing into it. Uh, the tree um, also still has living, little living termite colony in it. You can see them running around there. So, yeah, and that's a little wax moth you can see running around there so wax moths come in and start laying eggs and that so the bees have started abandoning some of the newer stuff which is a little bit early um, for the time of the year normally it's closer to winter that they sort of start to shrink up the hive so I'm suspecting they're a little bit resource poor um, although that said there was honey higher up in the hive so it's just unusual anyway Okie dokies, we are still working our way up, so the hive's shrunk heaps from where it used to be. This is still abandoned comb, um, abandoned to wax moth. Um, yeah, it's actually very surprising how much it's shrunk, but oh well, we're nearly at the bulk of it, so the living part of the hive is only about a uh, metre 25 um, so yeah it's yeah, shrunk a lot thank you doggies so this is that part that I deliberately cut so that I would have almost no bees on it um, and then this is the exposed hive it has shrunk a lot in in this season. So all up there about a meter twenty. Um, the brood's still white, um, there's no sunken cells, so I'm not suspecting disease. I can't see chalk brood. So they've just become resource poor and um, started shrinking themselves. Definitely unusual, but oh well, um, let's keep going. Okie dokies, we are halfway through the comb. Um, queen is still in the hive. And the bees are sort of clustering back up on the hive. Um, we do have a lot of nurse bees in the hive and they're madly fanning, telling the other bees come here, we've got some babies and everything, not realising there's also some babies over there, so um, they're sort of splitting their, splitting their fanning at the moment, but we'll get them all into the box soon enough and with the queen and we'll all be in the right direction. We're almost at the last layout. sunlight is causing flares. Anyway, um, one of the most common things I get asked when I open the hive within five minutes of opening the hive and there's someone around, they usually go, oh, so have you caught the queen yet? Uh, most people don't, aren't aware that the queen that spends most of her life in darkness uh, living in a hive. She only leaves to go into the sunlight twice in her life, once to go on mating flights, uh, as in multiple mating flights, and once to swarm when the bees have run out of room and half the hive leaves and uh, the queen goes with them and the new queen keeps the old hive going. So as such, when you expose a hive like this, the queen will always go find the darkest spot she can find, which means she's often collected right at the end of the relocation, once we've got everything out, or part way through because she's found a dark spot on a piece of comb. Uh, but rarely do we see her early in the relocation. As such, at the moment, the, I suspect the queen's up in the cavity up there based on 
the bees current behavior and how they're clustering up around her so we'll get this what I think is the last piece of comb out and then we will go looking for Queenie and now all the comb is out we, it's a matter of finding the queen in amongst these thousands of bees once we've got the queen it's really easy I'll be able to just close up the hive leave it on the flat section and the bees should do the rest themselves as in going to the new box okay so queen's been elusive there's quite a few crevices in this tree which is making it quite hard to find her so now I've got to do another cut to split this open and make it easier on myself okay we've cut a bit more out, divided it into sections and now it's a matter of chasing down the queen. I do suspect she's on this section. The bees aren't leaving this section. So let's see if we can find her. Okay and here, oh, here we have the queen. So yeah, she was on here, she's not anymore. Uh, I'll now put her in the box. I'll put some branches in that over the top of the box just so the direct heat um, doesn't hurt it. And, um, but you can see now the bees are running into the box because they smell the eggs and don't have the queen with her because she was over there. Um, so we can now put her in the box and just cover it up. And I've put leaf coverage over the top of the hive so that the direct heat of the sun doesn't cause the bees to overheat and they decide they've sconed even though the queen can't get out. I've put the second log that the queen was on up against the first and the bees are following the pheromone that's being fanned by the other bees up into the new hive. You can see heaps of bees flapping their wings like mad, exposing that little white tip on the end of their tail. They're fanning out pheromones, telling all the bees, hey, our home may have fallen, but this is where our new home is. Come here, live here happily. And so that's what they're doing. They're running into the hive, following that pheromone trail. Polly, they're wonderful girls. And here we go, so, these have fully cleared this section. I suspect the queen had been hiding in this cavity, um, which is why she was so hard to get to with a cluster of bees around her. But anyway, um, so they've fully cleared this log. They're almost fully all off this log and mostly all in the hive. So that first hive is doing phenomenal. And uh, now it's off to the second hive. You can see off in the distance there's the playground and then over there is the tree that's felled of the other hive in it and in this willow we think I don't know trees that I don't put bees on um, we have a hive down here in their base okay it's not very deep uh, it mostly goes up to, off to the left and a little bit up so there we go, exciting. Um, don't know how well it comes out in the video, but there we go. So mostly goes down. Um, the so fingers crossed. I don't have to cut out a too big a section. The tree doesn't need to be felled. Um, they've got water views. Uh, river riverfront frontage. You know, you pay a fortune for that in um, real estate. They've got it for free. But, yeah, perfect little hive. We can cut a, uh, what we call a peekaboo hole, about uh, 30 centimetres, 20, 30 centimetres by two foot. Um, slit in the tree and we'll be able to get um, the huge majority of it out without having to cut any further. Shouldn't destabilise the tree. It's um, quite a 
nice tree so it's just a matter of cutting enough to get the hype out and so here's a little cut we've made to expose the hive um, most of the hive down below is dead uh, it's, yeah um, same as the other one uh, looks like resource poor so that makes life interesting uh, the hive unfortunately goes a heap further up the tree so I do have to do another cut I didn't want to do another cut um, but yeah, the entrance, the old entrance was just here, and yeah, oh well, so it's going to be two pieces. Okay, so same as the other one. It's resource poor. Wax moth is in here. You can see a wax, a small, there's two types of wax moth. There's the greater and the lesser. That's the lesser running around there. It's a lot smaller than the greater. And let's see if I can find, uh, see that wiggly wormy thing? That is a wax moth larvae. Um, Ooh, or a hive beetle larvae. No, I think it, hive beetle larvae and wax moth larvae look very similar. Difference. Okay, so there's a. Oh, let's see if we can focus this properly. So there's a definite wax moth larvae. Wax moth larvae produce this webbing, uh, like spider webs. Okay. Um, and you can see it's big, it eats its way through the wax and leaves that webbing trail. Whereas those smaller ones. When they're so tiny, it's honestly hard for me to tell if it's wax moth or hive beetle. Um, they do look very similar. Um, but hive beetle is even worse than wax moth. It turns the honey rancid. So yeah, the bees have abandoned the lower half of this hive. And um, yeah, now we're, we'll have to get rid of these pests. Okay, uh, It went quite a deep down too. So it was a, yet another big hive that I suspect run out of resources so they shrunk early. Okay so this one was a bit harder than expected. I don't like cutting extra holes uh, but I had to. Queen ran up this trunk. There is a cluster of bees up there uh, with some redback spiders and whatnot but it's all good because um, Queen is now in the cage, bottom right. Um, you'll see her. So we now have the queen. Who? Uh, so yeah, she's obviously not happy about being caged, but we've got her at least. Um, put her in the box, clean up the comb. I had to grab out quickly to try to get her fast, and then um, set up the box so that bees reorientate to the box. Whew. Okay, so the other hive did everything it was meant to do. Uh, got the queen in the box, got the babies in the box, and the bees went into the box. This hive, on the other hand, has decided, no, we're not going to follow those rules. We're going to stay in the, in the trunk and go somewhere else. So now I've got a scoop more bees into the box so that we get a critical mass and they start going into the box instead of climbing the trunk. Oh, fun times. Okay so I've taken the lid off to expose the bees that are in the box so that their fanning allows the bees flying around to start landing in the box. I'll leave it exposed for about half an hour or so. That way we get more bees in the box and then it's more likely the ones in the trunk leave the trunk. I also smoked up top with the smoker so that now there's no, almost no bees up there um, and there's lots of bees on the outside. Yeah. Uh, on a side note, yes, uh, I've cut holes in the tree. It's not enough to destabilize it. Um, I'll 
um, in this instance. Also, the tree is supporting itself because a branch from the other trunk, a good solid branch from the other trunk, has fused to the trunk of the the uh, to the main trunk. So that's also helping to self-support uh, the the tree. So yeah, it's it's all a win-win in this, except for the fact that the bees aren't doing what they're meant to be doing and running directly into the hive. <laughs> so we'll give it, I said, half an hour with the lid off, let the bees, more bees land in the box and then see what happens after we put the lid back on. Thank you, Dax. So now the lid's back on and it worked. We now have bees running into the box, fanning towards the box. Oh, that's a relief. They're doing now what they're meant to be doing. Also put a little bridge in there. I uh, don't know if it's achieved anything, but um, so now with the a critical mass of bees in the box, the rest are going, hey, let's come in here. And the world's now a wonderful place. So two successful relocations. I'll come back Thursday night to collect the hives and then um, this tree can be put back together and the arborist can clear up the old dead tree. Okay, just came back just to double check on them and they've cleared off everywhere they were. There's still some inside not many, but they are all slowly wait, making their way into the box. So, yay. Uh, the old A-Team expression, love it when a plan comes together, doesn't often happen with bees. <laughs> they do what they want, but on the whole we're able to um, guide them in a direction that we'd like.